Due to a lack of a la carte game marketing in favor of a heavy focus on the subscription service Game Pass, many think that Xbox is going third party. But your boy's here to tell you why that's a bunch of crock. Let's get into it. What's up, peoples? What's up, peoples? What's up, peoples? It's your boy, MM2K, back again with another one. Hey, yo, do me a huge favor. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Rock those bells for notifications, please, so you know when your boy's dropping these doses. I appreciate all of y'all straight up because I'm not too proud to ask. Now, let's get into it. Yo, here's the deal. Gamers continue to question Microsoft and Xbox's, excuse me, marketing strategy as it relates to gaming and the presentation of its, of its exclusive titles. More recently, the Gears of War game, Gears 5, which is set to release at the time of this recording, or close to it, which is their biggest AAA franchise since 2016. People are like, what's going on with this marketing in here? Now, Phil has said some unflattering things to many regarding the sale of his console. Remember the whole infamous, you know, I ain't got to sell you a console thing, right? <laughs> and then, more recently, close to the time of this recording, CEO Satya Nadella is now getting into the unfavorable Bibble Babble game, right? Recently, in an investor's meeting, he talked about gaming as it's going to end up like some ingredient in some type of gumbo service offered via Azure. Instead of a proponent with heavy focus on dedicated hardware. Therefore, many suggest that this is just a turn towards third party. That's the only thing that makes sense to them. But here's why they are wrong about this analysis. First, let's talk Xbox Live. It is rumored that Xbox Live pulls in around $2 billion a year in revenue. Okay. People grumble that the subscription fee for Xbox Live based on consoles isn't fair. Because only console people, excuse me, that want to utilize Xbox Live in order to play multiplayer games have to pay. Yet Microsoft's response to that was, that, that fee that you're paying for Xbox Live to get online and play on console, that's to help subsidize the console. <laughs> but let's do the math, all right? Microsoft... And, and more reasonable and more favorable numbers, all right? More, you know, sound numbers. I think it's fair to say that Xbox, with the sale of each console, loses anywhere from $25 to $50, right? And that's because Microsoft doesn't have the third-party uh, manufacturing deals that Sony's known to have, because Sony sells a whole bunch of other goods, right? Microsoft does it. They got third-party deals that can make the price of putting something together for them a lot cheaper, all right? So when you go from the whole Xbox family, from the S to the SAD, and then to the Xbox One X. It's reasonable, again, to surmise that they're losing anywhere between $20 to $50 per console, okay? Now, an Xbox Live subscription can go anywhere from $40 to $60 a year if you're doing a one-time annual fee or a total of $120 after a 12-month subscription period, okay? If you're paying month to month. That means that either after three months, six months, or 13 months max, Xbox has made all of its money back. So when you talk subsidizing the console, what about all those uh, subsequent years, right? <laughs> That's not subsidizing. That, uh, in, in, in other terms, is called instead beating a consumer over the head with a cash register. And you take that into consideration with the game sales that are going to come with the new console that was purchased. Man, come on, stop. Subsidizing, that's baloney. What's going on is they're making hand over fist with Xbox Live on console. And that $2 billion is not something that you give up lightly, okay? Going third party, you lose that, all right? Speaking of third party, though, and not Microsoft third party, but other third party, third parties. Now, why is that important to Microsoft and why is that holding them back from ever going third party themselves? Well, I'm gonna tell you why, because Microsoft's no, Microsoft knows that this generation, their exclusives are trash. And look, that's not fanboy fodder. That's not coming from your boy. That's coming from Phil, Sis, uh, Phil Spencer himself, okay? He said, 
He alluded to this at the DICE speech that he gave in 2018, praising Nintendo and Sony's uh, output as far as games is concerned, way more than his own. And then also at the Game Awards, I believe in 2018, where he got on stage individually with Jeff Keighley and he said, yeah, we can do better. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You remember that? Phil and company know that their AAA bangers are duds. <laughs> and, they, and they know that on top of that, even with the new studios that they've purchased, that they will not be able to make enough revenue off of that alone to subsidize, or not subsidize, excuse me, that's Microsoft's bullcrap lingo, to, to uh, make up for third-party sales of games like NBA 2K, Call of Duty, or whatever, if they were to forego that and go third-party themselves. They know that their output couldn't even meet, match that. Couldn't even meet that. You know what I'm saying? So let me give you another example. Do you know why, at the time of this recording, with Microsoft dropping its financials and everything is on an upward trend except gaming, consoles are down 48% and software is down particularly 10%. You know why software is down 10%? Because of just one game alone, Fortnite. Fortnite did not have one of its better years since release and that heavily, heavily affected the Xbox. It heavily affected everybody, but Xbox more than anything because the draw to Xbox more than all the other platforms or it's third-party games again third-party games are the biggest pieces of software being bought everywhere but more particularly with xbox especially how they marketed the x where they're not producing those triple a bangers for you to showcase it on a regular basis on the x they're relying on third-party contributions in order to do so all right so again Sales of games like Fortnite, Call of Duty are more critical to Xbox's platform than anybody else. Hence why it hurts them more when those games don't do well. So again, why would you give that up to go with a lineup that you know is trash? That you've admitted to, to the public, is trash. And it's going to take you a long time to maybe even attempt to get it up to par the way you want to, you know? So I get it, everybody. There's something funny going on in the air. And because something funny is going on in the air, everybody's spidey senses is tingling, but they don't know where to sling the web at. But your boy done told you. They're not going third party, but something's going on. Now, what is it? You may be saying to yourself, what is it, MM2K? Get to the punchline, all right? Here's what the deal is. It's not that they're trying to go third party. They want to be a storefront like Steam, baby. I mean, look at it. If you compare what they're doing in comparison to Valve, just look at it. Valve has a handful of popular games, right? And those games, though, of the most popular on the platform, and that platform being Steam, they are not what's raking in all of the money on Steam. It's third-party AAA titles sold at a discount or with features like mods and stuff like that that's appealing to the PC crowd and the endless shovelware that people like to experiment with during Steam sales. Now, Microsoft, on the other hand, they're getting money by selling hardware. You know what I'm saying? Likely to make more money after this gen because Satya Nadella has alluded to that, you know, going into the future, if you want a premium, if you want premium hardware, you're going to have to pay a premium price at Microsoft. He said, he's pretty much said that, okay? So they're making money off of selling hardware, even though maybe not up front, they're making it back in about three, six or 13 months with Xbox Live. And they're making it to the tune of $2 billion a year, okay? They are making most of their money off of third-party games. We've already showed you the proof that was in the pudding, okay? For the simple fact that just one single game, Fortnite, even though it's a large game, but just one single game drastically affected the Xbox ecosystem and how well it was doing, okay? And if they can see what Steam is doing with shovelware and they can make their own to keep the store honest, to keep it fruitful with just content, all right? then that's an ultimate selling point for Xbox and Microsoft and Phil Spencer and, and company, right? They're not going to forego the third party, the thing that's, that's keeping the lights on to become their own third party. They want to be a storefront. 
I keep telling y'all this, and y'all gonna take these jagged pills, and you gonna swallow it no matter how bad it hurts, because you need this medicine. So again, Xbox, they are abandoning to the dismay of many, and including your boy, the traditional norms of executing your exclusive titles, having a gaming footprint, and servicing the hardcore for this more nuanced approach. But again, the nuanced approach is not third party. They want to be a storefront. Now, down the road, may they forego um, consoles? If the benefits of their subscription service outweigh that two billion that they're making a year with Xbox Live by having a console out there, then yeah, they'll forego it. But that's that's still a long ways coming. So they're still gonna push some hardware, you know what I'm saying? But again, they wanna be a storefront. Their model more mimics what Steam is doing and um, what Valve is doing with Steam than anything else. All right? And that is it. But no, 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 no. Here's what you really need to think about. Now to think about it, the real question isn't are they going third party? But if this doesn't work, do they just go away? Now that's it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? From your boy MM2K. Hey, yo, let me know what you think about what I had to say in the comment section below. Because like I always tell y'all, y'all can come with me or come at me. It does not matter to your boy. But if you did like what I had to say, you know what I'm saying? You can catch me on the corner of every boulevard. Check out the links below to follow me. And y'all do a show with your peoples. Snow Bunny, Dirt Griggity, Nethos. It's called Scram Punks. We do it every Wednesday, 9.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Dirt Griggity's channel. Check out hashtag Scram Punks for more information on that. And yo, check my brethren, the broadband bullies. We out here doing the damn thing. Check out that Discord link, okay? Check out that Patreon link, all right? Check out that link to that gear because it's fly. And yo, I do a, I do a show... I do a couple of shows on my new channel, the Hard Knock Digital Culture. On Hard Knock Digital Culture, we are highlighting hardcore gritty gaming. We got hardcore gritty, gritty gaming podcast streams, the whole nine yards. Interviews are coming with some big gaming community names. You just stay tuned. Then we also are highlighting hardcore gritty um, cinema and media, which includes martial art movies, martial art series, and anime. So you definitely don't want to miss it. You know what I'm saying? The Hard Knock Digital Culture over at twitch.tv forward slash Mighty Most 2000. And with that being said, hey, yo, man, keep your head on the swivel. Know what's really going on out here in these gaming streets. And with that, y'all have a wonderful, wonderful gaming day. Peace.